Japanese plan to conquer Malaya and Singapore in December 1941 meant the capture of two landing points. The first at Kotubaru in northern Malaya was defended by Australian and Indian forces. But the Japanese knew that the Patani and Singora in South Thailand were held by the Thai army, who would offer little resistance. Here, the Japanese were also reliant on Britain not advancing into Thailand to repulse the landings. The 5th Division of the Imperial Japanese 25th Army was tasked with taking these two landing points. Seizure of the ports would enable a quick build-up of land forces, and capturing the nearby airfields would allow for the Japanese 3rd Air Division to establish themselves to support the ground troops. Once ashore, the 5th Division would split its attack, with the 9th Brigade advancing against Arul Sar and the 42nd Infantry Regiment moving on to Crow. This would capture the line of the Perak River and allow for more air bases to fall into Japanese hands. After this initial objective had been taken, the advance on Kuala Lumpur could begin. Yamashita, commander of the 25th Army, was aware that speed was of the essence and a build-up of supply would not be possible once the landings had taken place. On the 8th of December, the two Japanese forces landed in Thailand and Malaya. Landing at Kotubaru, the Japanese forces got ashore despite resistance from the Indian defenders. Meanwhile, as expected, the landings at Patani were largely unopposed. As the Japanese landed, there was confusion in the 3rd Indian Corps whether to enact Operation Matador. Operation Matador was a British defence plan to invade Thailand in the event of a Japanese attack, and the confusion meant that the Indians delayed their advance. Despite pushing aside Thai resistance and roadblocks, the Indians only managed to advance 30 miles. Meanwhile, the Japanese had advanced 75 miles in 60 hours and smashed into the Indian soldiers, stopping them dead. With Matador dead in the water, the 11th Indian Division moved south to the road junction of Jitra. The area around Jitra had been prepared by the Indian soldiers, but had taken a lower priority than the preparations for Matador. Heavy rain also hampered the preparations. Although the position at Jitra was not ideal for defence, it was north of the airfield of Alostar which had to be defended. Unfortunately, unknown to the commander of the Indian 3rd Corps, Lieutenant General Sir Lewis Heath, the RAF had already abandoned the base on the 9th of December. The British defence would be for nothing. On the 11th of December, the Japanese advance guard initially made contact with the Indian 1st 14th Punjabs. This was a covering force which withdrew in the face of opposition. This battalion was then reinforced by the 2nd 1st Gurkha Rifles Battalion, with the intention to hold the Japanese north of Jitra until the 12th. However, heavy rain and poor visibility meant that the Japanese armour and motorised infantry scattered both units with frontal attacks and flanking manoeuvres. The next day, the first 14th Punjabs were only able to count 200 men amongst their number. The initial contact was a huge blow for the British defence, losing two combat battalions immediately. The Japanese column continued its advance down the road towards the main position of the 15th Indian Brigade. This was led by two Type 95 light tanks and 10 Type 97 medium tanks of the 1st Tank Regiment, along with elements of the 5th Reconnaissance Regiment. During the night of the 11th, the Japanese reached the main defence line north of Jitra, and the initial probing attack cost them two tanks. However, the 2nd 9th Jats on the British right flank received confusing reports that they had been flanked. This led to them being reinforced by two battalions of the 6th Brigade. Another Japanese attack at 0300 hours on the 12th was repulsed, and the situation restored by a British counter-attack. Three hours later, another Japanese attack in driving rain struck the junction of the 1st Leicesters and 2nd 9th Jats battalions. This attack achieved a penetration into the British defence line. The 1st 8th Punjabs counter-attacked, but it was ill-coordinated and easily repulsed by the Japanese with heavy losses, including the battalion commander. East of the road, the Japanese overran a company of 2nd 9th Jats, and got as far as a reserve position of the 2nd 2nd Gurkhas at the water feature of Sungai Bata. The British divisional commander, Major General David Murray Lyon, requested a withdrawal south to defensive position at Gurun, some 30 miles away. He had no reserves, a dispirited division faced with a tank attack, and feared his lines of communication would be cut with the Japanese advancing towards Crow. However, Lieutenant General Arthur Percival, General Officer Commanding, refused the request and ordered Murray Lyon to hold at Chitra. Despite this, the brigade commanders decided that they would already start to withdraw to the Sungai Bata. The 1st Leicesters began their withdrawal at 1600 hours and were joined by the 2nd 9th Jats. False reports that the Japanese tanks were in the rear quickly turned this withdrawal into a rout. This confirmed Murray Lyon's fears that the division could be destroyed and requested a withdrawal again at 1930 hours. It was approved, but by this time the rain was still falling heavily and the withdrawal would have to have been executed by poorly trained troops on a single road. Despite these setbacks, the 11th Indian Division was able to break contact with the Japanese, but with the heavy loss of men and material. 
the British withdrawal on the 12th of December ended the Battle of Yitra. An entire British division in prepared positions had been attacked and defeated by a battalion of Japanese supported by a company of tanks. Most of the units in the 11th Division had suffered heavily, losing both men and material. Divisional morale had also taken a heavy hit. Over the next few days, as the division fell back to the unprepared position at Gurun, the Japanese harried the British, giving them no rest. Unfortunately, this was only a sign of things to come over the next few weeks in Malaya.